All right, guys, welcome to the stream today. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we're a little bit late, but uh, I had a couple things to finish up uh, before I started. So anyway, uh, so today's gonna be kind of a simple one. All we're gonna do is we're gonna make some hybrid blanks. Uh, I had some blocks that I've been kind of sitting on my desk waiting. And the thing was, I didn't really know what colors I wanted to go with these. Th so they've been just sitting there. So I thought this would be pretty cool to do on the stream you guys can kind of help shape the way that we make these blanks. So like I said, kind of a simple one, probably shouldn't take too long today. Um, this is the last stream before I head off to Hawaii. We're gonna be uh, headed there tomorrow. So uh, kind of a little quick last stream. I gotta finish up a couple things in the shop tonight and then I'm pretty much in vacation mode. So anyway, like I said, I hope everybody's doing good tonight. Let's see, there's already people chatting it up. Hey, what's up, Brett? Can it be turned? What's going on? Dennis, Jen, Jim, Langley, City Shave Shop. Cool, that's a tough one to say. <laughs> ten, say that 10 times fast. Uh, Kendra's here. Shane, Shayle, how's it going, guys? So, uh, like I said, kind of a simple one. I got a couple of little things that I can kind of share with you guys uh, before we begin, but we're just gonna pretty much jump right into the, the blanks. Um, we got, and so what I'm going to be doing is we're going to use these two inch block molds. Uh, just stick these guys down in there. I might have to do, I didn't think about this. Oh, that one does fit perfectly. Okay. We're, we're good to go. I didn't know if I might have to trim those up to fit them in the blocks. Basically just stick those guys in there and add some resin. So before we start talking about the, the blanks today, like I said, a couple things that I can kind of share with you guys. So I'm going to switch to this view. Uh, if anybody didn't see on Instagram, I finished up this uh, blank finally, and it's kind of cool. I actually really like it. Um, this is the one that, for, the, for, for those of you guys that were here, uh, when I was doing the stone coat countertops epoxy stuff, this was the big blank. This is the one that we poured in the six inch tube. And I kind of thought that I screwed it up uh, when I poured it, because I kind of dumped the, you can kind of see some pearl in there. Um, some kind of like smoky color pearl. Um, I meant to make those swirls really, really like just little wisps and I totally dumped it in there and then dumped more resin in it. I'm like, oh man, right when I did it, I knew I screwed it up. So the reason I made this a hollow form is because it would thin it out and you could kind of see through it. I was worried it was just gonna all bunch up with that pearl and, and purple. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now, one thing that did happen though, you can see this, <laughs> see all these little sags. I was trying to do the, the resin finish thing on this and I totally ran out of time. I had to leave the shop and this stuff just was not setting up. And I just said, I'm done. I took it off the lathe and let it sit there. And this is the, the effect that I got. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, totally not what I meant to do, but sometimes design has a mind of its own. So pretty cool little pot, actually. It, it's, uh, it really looks and feels like glass, actually. Um, and I'm really digging the, the finish, you know, just applying finish on top of a blank because you get some serious gloss and then you don't even have to buff it, sand it, do anything. I only sand it up to about maybe 400 grit. I think you could even get away with 240. So it's kind of a cool way to do it, but there's, I'm still learning how to do it, you know, properly. And I, I kind of almost think that Alumilite clear might be a better way to go with this because it sets up faster. Um, I was using liquid diamonds on it. So anyway, uh, the, what di diamond painting pen? I'm not sure. Oh, the one that I was turning, that was just, I, I'm not actually going to even finish that. I was just quickly turning something today to, to test out those little uh, blanks. I might turn it up eventually. Total happy mistake, man. Like it really, I got to be honest. I don't even know, like it, it would take serious it would be very tough to get that again because you, you'd you have to time it right to where it doesn't just drip off kind of, I think. So I don't know. I'm uh, I'm happy with it. Um, one other thing that I wanted to, did I just see somebody's from Guam? I think that's the first gu person from Guam I've had on the stream. That's cool. Let me, let me switch back and look in here. Who was that? Chris, how's it going? I didn't know you were in Guam. That's cool. Anna's here too. And Christina's here. Nice. So many people. Ray's here. Wow. Monkey skull. Dang. All right. So I guess I was talking a lot right then. <laughs> Lots of people joined. Uh, another thing that I wanted to share real quick is uh, stainless bottle stoppers finally came out with their new uh, bottle opener uh, piece and it's stainless steel. Um, this was one of the other uh, epoxy blanks, the stone coat blanks. 
that I made. And so uh, I wanted to show this one. This one is not out, this, this piece. And this is like one of those, it won't bend the, the cap. Um, that one's not coming out until like SWAT, I believe. Uh, but right now they did just launch this one. Um, and it's a really good bottle opener. It's pretty cool. Um, both of them are interesting for their own things. I, I like the non-marring thing. This is kind of a sleek design. Um, but this one's kind of cool because it can actually sit, you know, standing up like that and it works really well. So they both work good, but um, this one's, you know, just, it'll, it'll pop it right off. So I wanted to share that. Um, those, these ones, this one's available on stainlessbottlestoppers.com right now. Um, the other one, like I said, they'll be launching that at SWAT, uh, which is August 20th. So end of the month, it's not that far away. Um, SWAT symposium. And then I got to actually have to zoom out a little bit. <laughs> Got to zoom out. Look at that sucker. We got a one and a half inch by like 12 or 13 inch. Um, this is that, that glow in the dark pink stuff. And I made this for Carl. He's going to be trying to make a wand, um, you know, like one of the magic wands out of that uh, with this glow in the dark and, and the, the glitter and all that stuff. So uh, I don't know when he's going to get to that. I'm not even going to send it to him until after, um, after I get back from Hawaii, but uh, be looking for that down the road uh, on his channel. Here's an interesting thing also that I wanted to share. So, you know, the easy wood tools come in these like tubes. What a pretty awesome uh, mold. <laughs> and like, frankly, I don't even care. If I didn't use any uh, mold release because I don't really care if it gets stuck on there. You can just cut it off basically. Um, a little bit easier in that case than PVC. Those are a little harder if they get stuck. So I wanted to kind of quickly share those little things uh, before we get going here. Uh, but anyway, let me stop real quick, see what you guys are up to. Like I said, I'm just about on vacation mode, so I'm, uh, I'm having a good day. And I got, I got all my chores. There's a lot of like last minute things that I needed to do. One was clean the shop and I did it already. So like, I'm pretty much just cruising out. It's, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so, um, oh, hey, Jason, that's awesome. I'm glad to, I'm glad I could have you know, spark the interest in it. That's actually kind of why that was the goal when I started my YouTube channel was when I got into resin casting, I was just like, I fell in love with it. I was like, how did I not know about this? And I was like, man, more people I think would really love doing this. There's so many cool different things you can do. So it's always cool when other people get started and I had a little hand in it. So that's awesome. I can't wait to see what you make. Uh, if you post stuff on like Facebook or Instagram, definitely tag me. I de definitely want to see it. Steven Daniels, what's going on, man? You've been making some cool blanks lately. And yeah, Doug, that popcorn bowl is awesome. Congrats. What, what was that? 100th video kind of celebration thing, I think. So, all right. I think I'm kind of caught up a little bit. <laughs> not, not, not your fault. I take all the blame. That's fine. I think uh, Doug does some s phenomenal work, though. So, um, you know... It's pretty cool when, when, you know, like if you can introduce somebody to something and then like other people just like start up and then they like take it and run with it. Like, I just love that kind of stuff. It's so cool. All right. So let me see which, what camera first thing. Okay. So let, let's just kind of start with what's going on here. So we got these, these two inch by it's like two inch, two inch deep, and then six and a half inch long blocks. Um, this is going to be mostly actually, you know what I think I'm going to do is actually cut this down. Uh, a little bit because I don't really necessarily need that much wood, you know, so I want it to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go cut that real quick on the table saw. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is push it down in there and I'm going to use some hot glue to kind of hold it in place. That way the resin can't get under it and kind of push it up. So I'm going to go cut that real quick. Um, we might, get, I'm going to get the hot glue gun going. This one fits. I think I already cut this one, uh, but I definitely, I want to put a little bit of hot glue probably on the, actually the side and then just let it kind of firm up. So let me get the hot glue gun plugged in and roll in here. And I think we can use this camera down here to do it, to capture the action. So um, I guess I can just kind of turn this. Uh, my cables aren't working. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna use this camera. You can kind of see me way off in the distance. Uh, I'll just be over the table saw real quick, cutting this thing. Like I said, I just want to cut it a little bit shorter just because I got to be honest, if I had to choose, I want to go with more resin. So I'm going to mute you guys so you can't hear the table saw and I'll be right back.
There goes the clean shop. <laughs> That's why I don't clean my shop ever, because it's just going to get dirty in five seconds. All right, so let's switch to this view. Let's uh, make sure that we got a, a good shot here, kind of. Um, my hot glue gun's just about ready. So I'm going to get this stuff kind of over a little closer to you guys. We'll start with this one first. Um, and all I'm going to, whoa, we got hot glue flying all over the place. All I'm going to do is just add a little bit on the side of this thing. It looks like this is dipping in in some areas. So I'm just going to kind of do that. And then we're just going to pop it down in here, hopefully. And I'm just going to kind of hold it up against that wall. And like I said, it's just so that, you know, when, if resin kind of gets underneath it, it won't tend to push it up. Um, I just want this thing to be held in place so it doesn't move. Now with this one, this one's actually so tight that I don't even think we need to hot glue it. It's like a really snug fit in there. I mean, the resin's really not going to push it around or do anything. So we're good to go with that. So that's the first thing that I like to do is just get those things glued in and, and stuck there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss these guys in the oven. And I've got it already kind of warmed up a little bit, so just get those guys going. What I'm going to use for resin today, I think I got hot glue flying all over my legs or something. <laughs> Something's attacking me. Um, what we're going to use is, I still have some of that Alumilite Clear regular set, and the nice thing about this is I'll be able to pull this out before I leave uh, the shop today. I don't really want to leave everything in the pressure pot for, you know, a week. So Lumilite Clear regular set. Um, this stuff has technically like a five to seven minute working time, but it's 81 degrees in the shop right now. I anticipate that I really want to get this stuff in there uh, probably around the four minute mark, something like that. It's It's been kind of, it sets up pretty quick. I mean, even Lumilite Clear slow set, you don't have the 12 minutes that it says when it's, you know, 80 degrees. I only have probably about eight or nine uh, until it starts kind of starting to really set up. Let's see here. Make sure I'm not missing. I can't read. K-R-L-T-P-L-P. I really can't read. What is that? I really, I, I can't even guess what, how to say that. But hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh, man, that's a, that's a tough screen name right there. Uh, Julie's here. How's it going? Uh, let's see here. And Kevin made it. Nice. Uh, somebody asked if that's an RZ mask. Let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah. The RZ masks are pretty nice. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how, if they're like a hundred, you know, if you compared that to a, a fitted, you know, f face mask, like the regular respirators, I don't know if like, they're not certified, uh, for, for certain dust things. So just know that. However, most people don't actually get a good fit on their, their, those respirator type things anyway. And if that's not, if it's not fit right, or if you have facial hair, it's, you're not getting a full seal anyway. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, the RZ mask does equally well, um, uh, as my, I had a 3M, you know, like respirator, but they're so, um, light that the other thing about it is I actually wear the RZ mask all the time because it's easy to put on and quick and light. And so I think they're a really good way to go, like I said. But keep in mind, you know, in some cases you may need to get a real respirator uh, that's, that's like fitted to your face for, for the most protection. Okay, so what do we got going on? Okay, so the question is, what are we going to be, what colors are we going for? That's the wrong camera. <laughs> So let's, let's, let's start with the, actually, this isn't burl wood. Let's start with, this is actually a maple and it's actually kind of almost burnt on the, on the inside. Um, we don't necessarily have to be able to see it. So there's two ways we can go with this. We can go with like a transparent color where you can actually see it does have some cool stuff going. Let me, let me switch to a different camera. That's not the right one. I don't know if you guys can kind of see. Let me get some light on this thing. See so yeah, how there's like, I don't know. There's a little bit of texture in there. It's not a very good view. Sorry about that. Let me, let me get my other camera over here so that you guys can actually see what's going on here. If you missed it before. I got actual light above me over here, so... 
See how there's like some texture? So we could go with transparent and you could kind of see in there. Or, you know, it's not a big deal if we just go with like, you know, pretty much opaque colors. I mean, I don't really care either way. That was the problem is I just, I couldn't make up my mind personally. So whatever you guys think, Seahawks colors. <laughs> yeah, right. No. How's it going, Clyde? Yeah, let's do some, let's do some casting. Yeah, I don't have the, they don't fog up or anything like that. Paradise blue with purple. I like that. I, I do like that blue and purple mix. That's a really good color combo. Lime green and day glow. Or not, what's day glow orange? <laughs> Some of you guys are funny. You guys come up with like these very specific ones. Uh, yeah, so, okay, sorry about that monkey skull. I, no, I don't have any problems. And my, I have problems with that, especially when it's 81 degrees in here. Um, but yeah, I do have, I, I, you know, I don't shave every morning or anything like that. So I have facial hair and I tend to have problems with glasses fogging up. All right. Deep green and yellow metal flake. Actually, I do have some interesting metal flake stuff. Ooh. Uh, I want to toss a couple things in front of you guys to see what you think about this. Glad you brought that up. So I have candy apple red metal flake. That would actually be pretty cool. Reds like those deep, those rich colors go good with it. Um, and I also have some teal um, kind of, what do they call this? Peacock metallic flake. I don't know, would that, would those both go together? Red, that's kind of a weird one. Um, I think I have, let me go look deeper in my little box over here. I think I also got some midnight blue. Uh, midnight blue and that in the red would look cool. We can maybe do like one of these colors in like a pearl. That would be pretty cool. Um, maybe like, mm, we could do like this blue sparkle and then purple pearl like a midnight purple. Let's see what you guys think about that. Antique gold and gold. Day glow, oh, fluorescent. But it doesn't really glow in the day. It's glow in the dark. Peacock, Christina wants peacock. Let's see here. Fluorescent orange. Oh, fluorescent. I see. I see. Sorry. I, I was thinking one thing and saying another. Uh, we could do, let's see here. Teal flake and pearl white. All right. So I think, I think I want to see this peacock and, uh, and pearl. Let's just see how that turns out. Cause that's, that's maybe not something that I would have actually picked. And so I kind of like that because that's kind of half the point is I want to kind of see things that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily have chosen on my own, you know? So let's go for that. Let's switch to this view over here. I'm going to get my little book of notes out. I'm going to get my pen too. So I can write in my digital, digital notebook. All right. So today's date is 8-2. Oh, I got to turn the thing on. That always helps. We're doing hybrids. All right, so number one, we're doing walnut wood. We're doing the two inch mold. I always write down all this stuff so that I know, you know what I did and, and I can come back and write notes if I want. We're using regular clear, the regular set from Illumilite. All right, so those molds hold 400 grams or so if I was gonna fill the whole thing. That walnut takes up at least a third of that. So let's just go with, let's try two, 250, uh, let's go with two, 280 grams of resin total. And then, like I said, we're gonna use it. Now I, get the, I got this from paintwithpearl.com. Uh, I don't know. There's lots of different places you can get this kind of stuff. I just, I bought a few things from them, so I know what to expect. Um, works fine. So if you want to try it out, check them out. But 
Um, there's other ones, maybe cheaper ones, you know, uh, it's one of those things where it's like the automotive paint and all that stuff. Uh, let's see here. So we're doing peacock and then we're going to just go with a white pearl. And I like using the micro pearl from Pearlex. I just, it's like the, it's like a true kind of, um, like that, that mother of pearl look, uh, is what you get when you load it up. So that's what I usually use. So we're going to go with mostly, I want to go with mostly this stuff, I think, the peacock. So we're going to go 70% that, 30% the white pearl. And let me see how much resin that is for each one. So 70% of 280 is 196. Oh, what did I do? 196. And like 84. Uh, is going to be white pearl. And micro pearl is the pearl that I'm going to use. So, now we got to figure out how much of this stuff to use. And I want to load it up. So, for that, it's about 200 grams or so. Um, 196. Um, I think I'm going to put like a teaspoon and we're going to see how kind of loaded up that is a teaspoon of this stuff. And then for the 84 grams of the white pearl, uh, for this mi mac uh, micro pearl, I think like half teaspoon is fine. So let's see what that looks like. And we can always adjust it as we go, you know, but that's, that should be a good thumbing it, you know, should give us a good start. Let's say. <clears throat> All right, so we need, let's see, 280, 140 times two. So the way that Illumilite Clear, regular set, well, either of them work. Illumilite Clear is a one-to-one -one by weight. So we're going to do 140 grams times two. So let me get a different angle for you guys. So you can kind of see what's happening over here, sort of. All right, so I'm zeroing it out. Whoa, super chats. Thanks, Anna, and thanks, Julie. I appreciate it. Peacock and purple. Well, we're going to do white. I'm sorry. <laughs> we already picked it. <laughs> but I appreciate the support. All right, so 140 grams of part A. One thirty, thirty-seven, thirty-nine. Oh, close! Getting closer. One forty, and the B is always a little bit harder. These nozzles kind of crust up with stuff, but at least it's not thick. You know what I mean? So we're going for 140. Oh, I went over, guys. So I need to add. I went. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I hit 145. So I need to add five more grams of part A to to equal everything out. Got to think. Got to think what I'm doing. You know. All right. We're good. And let's see here. I'll tell you what, Anna. You and Julie can pick the colors for the next one since you guys super chatted. How about that? So you got to stick around for that, but it won't take too long. Uh, one of the nice things about Illumilite Clear is it's so fast that we just kind of mix it up. Once we get things going, it's pretty much a couple minutes, and you pour it, and you put it in the pressure pot, and you're good to go. Now, i got to be honest. The one problem is we kind of need to wait for these molds to warm up a little bit more, probably. Um, and, and you notice that I stuck the wood in there and then stuck the whole thing in. 
Um, one thing to make sure you don't do, don't spray your molds with mold release and then try and stick that stuff in there. You don't, I didn't spray it or anything. There's no mold, mold release at all in those. Um, so that's one little caution, but um, you want to warm up, you know, any wood or anything else that you're kind of dunking in resin. That way that surface, it's going to want to kind of, it's going to flow into it rather than kind of suck away from it if it was kind of cooler than the rest of everything else. Casting mode, not vacation mode. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we went to Hawaii too. All right, so I'm going to start the clock here real quick. I need to kind of move quick here. So I'm going to dump out my 84 grams for the, for the white real quick. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Um, in the summers, if you're... If you're going to end up kind of messing around with stuff, you're not really, you know, ready. <laughs> um, I would recommend using the slow set version of this. Um, so we're, we're adding a teaspoon of this peacock. I don't know if you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. It's tough to move fast and have a camera. So that's four. This is a quarter teaspoon that I'm using. And it's, I went a little over because I was making pretty big scoops there. But I think that this is going to be good, and frankly, I don't really think I'm going to have a whole lot of time to be messing around. But, I mean, it's 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 pretty good. Especially for like a two-inch block, like a handle or something like that that you're going to make. It's going to be all intact. That This is going to be more than enough um, glitter in there. And then for this one, we're going to go with a half teaspoon. So I'm just going to knock that stuff off, make sure I don't have any glitter on there. And that, so that'll be two scoops of this. And I think that should be good for our pearl. Half tea, yeah, that's, that's going to be plenty. I probably, I probably could have just gone with a quarter now that I think about it. Um, one of the problems I have is when I'm doing blanks, like, you know, in the shop on my own and I'm writing notes down, a lot of times... Um, because the way that I learned how to, how much dyes you can add to, to Illumilite, they, the way that they tell you is based on only the part A, so like only half the resin. And so when I look at a number and I'm thinking how much powder to put in something, a lot of times I'm thinking, my initial thoughts is like, that's half of it. Whereas that 84 grams was actually all of it. So, um, we're more than, more than good on that. So... We are ready to go here. I'm going to turn up the light a little bit. Hopefully get you guys a good position here. It's not the best, but we'll make do. Um, the clock's at about two, two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, I'm finding, so I just started using the thermometer thing. And I got to be honest, it's not reliable. <laughs> it may, maybe at a certain temperature, it won't bleed if you're just using mica powders, but the the viscosity is not the same as the temperature and i pour things based on viscosities really is what i what i'm doing so for me i actually think that you know understanding what temperature things are at is good um ooh, that's going to be pretty cool i think but i also think that you know you kind of need to know timing a little bit and you really need to understand what thickness um, at least to get certain effects like swirling colors, you know, uh, you really have to understand that. So I actually think viscosity is really the key to when to, when to pour for color swirl. This stuff's already getting kind of warm here. So I got to kind of hurry. All right. Got our white in. Told you, you got to move quick sometimes. So that's this is why, you know, honestly, I think that the slow set is just kind of sometimes a better option for most people because you just have more time with it, you know? Um, you're not just rushing around trying to get it done. You have a little bit more time to kind of think and, and not rush the whole process. That's That's one of the big reasons why I, that's what I use usually. All right, so we're getting it in the pressure pot, and this is going to be set to 70 PSI. 
it's kind of a, a lot of talk and then I have to just rush around and throw these things in, <laughs> in these pots. So I, sometimes resin casting isn't the most lengthy amazing thing, but hopefully it'll give you guys an idea, you know, like what to expect when you are casting. You know, there's really no messing around. You gotta, you gotta kind of know what you're doing if you're using these slower setting resins. And even if you're using a, a, I mean, I'm sorry, faster setting resins, even if you're using a slow setting resin, the same kind of holds true because the only difference is you're going to be waiting around until, you know, the right temperature and viscosity or whatever. A lot of times if you're trying to mix colors or suspend things, you kind of need to wait till the, the end anyway, and you're kind of doing the same thing anyway. <laughs> so I'd rather just get the whole process over quicker. So that's why I use faster setting resins. All right, so let me stop real quick and see what's going on here. I'm gonna switch into the intro cam so you can watch me read the, the thing. It's better than looking at just dots on the thing, I think. Yeah, that thing turned out pretty good. I, I like that peacock color. Um, and I think with that white, I think that's gonna be a nice looking blank with that, that walnut. I've just found that like dark colored woods really look good with like crimson like that dark red or like a dark deep purple royal blue um, those kinds of colors and i think that teal is one of those that's just it looks rich i think just mixing and pouring yeah i would love here's the problem guys i would love to get into a house but the housing market around here is so ridiculous that the real, the reality is there's no way. I mean, it would take us 30 years to save up enough money to actually afford a house in this area. So I think we're gonna just give up on that. And I think next year I'm actually gonna air condition, like close off this part portion of my shop and just air condition it. Cause for me, especially I, you know, my product, my business, my, the income that I make, like 85% of it comes from me selling blanks. And it really helps, it would help me out a lot to not be having to deal with different temperature things and just kind of have everything simple. Plus, I just don't like the heat, you know? So, we'll see. Yeah, you guys have decided on the other one, huh? Oh, you like that bottle handle opener, huh? Or bottle opener, bottle opener handle. It was pretty cool. It was kind of a fun one that we messed around with. So just to, I'm gonna pull this back out just to make sure you guys, you said that you have your colors already. I'm just gonna show you once more just to make sure you don't have any questions. But it's, it's got a little bit of black kind of areas and then there's orange. And so again, I don't care, you know, uh, if you guys wanna do transparent or if you want pearls or, you know, what, whatever, it's up to you guys. I just wanna make sure you guys took a gander at that, took a look at it. And uh, yeah. Back to the intro. So what are chipsers here? What? How's it going? How's it going, man? Yeah, you haven't been here for a while. We got lots of new people, man. Green and orange. All right, all right. Um, let me, I want to go back up and I need to look at something real quick. Sorry guys, just one second. Trying to see, man, it's so hard. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I don't know what's happening. All right, I was looking back in the, in the thing. <laughs> Thanks, man, good to see you, brother. All right, so where did it go? Green and orange. Um, so what do, what do you guys want? Are you talking um, like green and orange pearl? Just like, because I got uh, blaze orange, is, I got to be honest, is probably one of my favorites. I, I, ever since um, uh, Brian was like, oh, dude, my favorite caster's choice color is, is orange. I've been intrigued by it and it made me want to look at it more. And I'm actually, I'm in agreement. I really like the blaze orange. So we could do a blaze orange pearl powder. Um, I don't have any, well, I guess I have some orange glitter, the long strand stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, you got everybody's here. Uh, Steven's here too. Who else? There's lots of people here. Let's see here. Um, 
Where did we go? Where did we go? Yeah, so just to let everybody know if you didn't know already, um, Anna and Julie are, are picking. They, they, they got the choices because uh, they, they, earlier they, they did the super chatting. They super chatted it up. And I thought, why not let them pick the colors? No glitter. All right. So blaze orange. Let me, I'm just going to say, uh, so what was it? Green and orange? Blaze orange. And we have a couple of choices on green. Um, we got, and I just totally rearranged this. I was like digging through this thing because I needed to see what I needed to, to restock on. Um, but there's three different colors of green. They all look good. I've tried them all. Um, all right, so there's only one orange. So blaze orange, I just want to double check and make sure. Blaze orange, pearl powder. I don't know if you can really see that, but that's a good one. And then I'm going to switch to this other view and kind of break these open so you can kind of see what's going on with our greens. So there is forest green, emerald green, and oh, there's actually four, four colors. I'm missing one. I gotta be honest, I'm not a super fan of forest green. I think it's kind of useless. It's kind of sort of in the middle of nothing and nothing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that one's not really the best way to go. Um, these, are, these are three good different shades. So you got lime green, obviously you know what that looks like. You got emerald green, that's like a true, you know, emerald green. And then you got spruce green, which is dark. Forest green, I think they're probably gonna get rid of and it's just really not the most amazing color. So, um, so which one of these guys would you, would you like to see? I'm not sure who's picking which, which one of those colors. The Zach pack, <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, let's see. So black with orange, that would work too. Blaze orange. Yeah, it's definitely. And what did Anna say about green toward air conditioning? Oh, thanks. That's, I appreciate it. I know I totally, I almost had a guy come out and he was going to block in the wall. I, I just, I can maybe do it, but he knows what he's doing with that kind of stuff. And, uh, I almost had him do it, but I was like, you know, what's going to end up happening is by the time you get in here and it gets done, it's going to be September and I'm not going to need the air conditioning and, and the separation. So I said, I'm going to deal with it this year and we'll see, and I can plan my little area and all that kind of stuff. The other nice thing about what I'm going to do with that air conditioning is I'm going to separate off an area basically for, for resin and, and like other things that I do not want dust in. That's one of the big problems I also have. Um, when I was turning the, this, uh, this thing and, and like the bigger projects that are resin, literally there is just a coating of dust everywhere in here, uh, because I just kind of blow it around. So it's going to be nice. So I appreciate the, 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 the towards air conditioning super chat. I appreciate it. Let's see here. So what emerald? Well, you know, we could go with black. Um, you know, I mean, the blank is kind of, it has some tones of black, but the one thing about that is, and I actually, I didn't glue this one in, so I want to pull this out. I don't think there's really black. I didn't dye it. Well, no, I take it back. There is, there's definitely some dark. So it, it, we could have, um, yeah, I just want to double check and show you guys. So there is some blacks in here. I might have actually used black dye on this in the stabilizing because it's it's dark. I think I actually did this one with black and orange. So um, we could go either way. So you pick, Anna, uh, green or black. Or actually, how about how about this? Soots crafting can be the tiebreaker between green and black. So whichever one you pick, Soots, we're going to go with. How about that? Since Anna's cool with either of them. Um, so I guess emerald green or, uh, or black. And for black, we got black pearl in our big box O goodies. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, you know what's pretty cool? Uh, when, when Caster's Choice got started, Brian was like, dude, I'm going to send you one of every color. <laughs> just because I want you to try them out. And, I'm, and I've always been, you know, obviously they're free, so I want to let you guys know that I, I'm using these things for free. But at the same time, I, I like them a lot, and it was just really nice of him to send that out. So that's why I, I pretty much try to use Caster's Choice mostly on the show. And I, I use them in my blanks, too, that I sell, so it's not like it's just for for the audience or anything like that. Uh, green. All right. So we got green. Actually, I, I think this is going to be cool. Green, black, orange, uh, is going to be a neat color combination on that blank. So this one, I would say that I'm going to say that there's like maybe a quarter that wood is taking up a quarter of it. So we need 75% of 400 is about 300 grams. So let me get my little cardboard piece out because what ends up happening is the reason I use this is because uh, there's usually resin all over this table. <laughs> so, so I don't want to, oh, I think my light died. Hold on guys. I got to replace the battery in this light because we're going to need it. I think that might be why we were having dark color issues on that one camera. Don't worry. It takes two seconds. I love these little led lights. You just pop one, a new battery in They're rechargeable. Pretty handy, I got them all over the shop. Pretty cheap too, actually. That's the other thing I like about them. Ooh, yeah, now we're bright. Okay, so, and I forgot to change the thing to here. So, uh, number two, number two is orange. And black, and that wood, by the way, is buckeye burl. I find that maple burl or box elder burl, which is kind of almost the same species, and um, buckeye burl are two of the best uh, best woods to use if you're going to do dye stabilizing. They really suck up color. So just a little kind of a tip there. Um, they seem to be, and, and it's kind of, you know, most of the people that I've talked to kind of agree with that. Um, you see a lot of people using maple burls or buckeye. All right, so we're doing 300 grams. Um, let's uh, let's just do that 70-30 again. I thought that was kind of cool. So 70-30. Let's do let's do well. Let's see here. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask Doug specifically. Uh, do you want 70% of orange or do you want 70% of green? <laughs> Jamie's here. What's up, man? I saw that that uh, that it was a, it was a bowl, right? The bowl that your your nephew turned. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's actually an interesting point that you brought up. The black uh, zombie Duke was saying the black and the stabilizing will be good enough. The other thing is black tends to just, I don't know, it, it, when you add black, it's better to add less black, you know. Um, it can tend to take over a, a blank for some reason uh, between the colors I've found with, with like pen blanks and all that kind of stuff. Doug's going with green, or yeah, green is the 70%. All right, so we're doing emerald, green, um, and we're going for pearly. We're going to just load this thing up. Now, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to guess, unless somebody bought it and then cut it into pen blanks, I kind of doubt it if you're going to buy a, a block like that. You're probably going to make a handle or something like that, stoppers, something where you're not going to, like, drill out the center and, and thin it down way, you know, way thin. So you don't necessarily need to add as much um, mica pearl. Whatever it's looking like in the cup is generally, as long as the blank is going to have a good, you know, half inch, three quarter inch of material uh, thickness. Whatever the cup looks like is pretty much what you're gonna get in the end, in general. Um, so, and then orange, blaze orange. Um, how much is 70% of 300? 
210 and 90. Okay. So, um, I think if we did, I think it, I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon uh, of the, the green in. That's the bigger one. And we're going to see where that's at in the cup. And then same for this. I'll just use a, a quarter teaspoon. That'll definitely be enough for that 90, 90 grams of blaze orange. All right. So let's get our cup out. Let's get you guys kind of looking here like that. That ought to be okay. Pretty good, huh? Let's see. <laughs> Everybody, you guys are fun in the, in the chat. The chat room is always the fun part. That's where the party's at, guys. Ooh, I need a drink of water. All right. So we've zeroed out our scale. I got my cup. We're going to be again using the regular Alumalite clear regular set, which is just their normal um, working time is like five to seven minutes, somewhere around there, kind of fast. And we need, let's see here, 150 grams of part A. We're doing all of it at once. We're mixing all, you know, 100% of everything in, in, in this one cup, and then I'm going to dump off. Uh, a little bit for the blaze orange, 90 grams for blaze orange after we've gotten everything mixed. Um, you could do it. Uh, the other thing is if you have, um, you know, like right now, if, if you're working in a pretty hot shop, uh, you know, it's over 80 degrees in your shop and you're using this regular clear, one thing that you can do that can give you a little bit more time is to, to you know, we're doing two colors. So you take and, and you, you mix two different cups. So 210 grams A and B that, that are mixed up and then uh, you know the 90 grams. And that can give you a little bit more working time um, to separate those out instead of trying to mix it all at once. Um, it might give you a, you know, a little bit more time doing that. Just kind of a little, little tip that you know, if you find that you're always running out of time, maybe you just need to split up your cups. Now I wouldn't recommend mixing very, very small amounts, you know, like 20 grams in each cup or something like that. But if you're doing, you know, a reasonably decent sized blank and you got a lot of colors, you know, you can, you can pour them out. And what I do is I, I measure out all my A and then measure out all the B and then stir them real quick. Um, but at the same time, it's also kind of easier just to mix one cup fast, like faster. So, uh, something to try maybe if you're having problems. One forty five, forty seven. Yeah, so we got a lot of fun stuff planned for Hawaii. Uh, a lot of relaxing, you know, but uh, lots of stuff. We've been there a lot of times. We got married there um, on the Big Island, and so we like going back. There's our like favorite spots that we go, and uh, this time we're gonna try and do a couple new things that we haven't done yet on on that island. Um, one of which uh, we we knew a guy that lived in Kona. Um, so he knew like all the best snorkeling spots on the, on the shore. Um, but this time we're actually going to, uh, how much is it? 90 grams. I'm just going to get a, yeah, I got more of these cups. Um, one, uh, one thing that we never really did was, was snorkel off of a boat. So we might try and do that this time. See kind of a different, that deeper ocean kind of area and all that stuff. It should be pretty cool. How's it going, bungling woodworker? Welcome to the stream. You caught the second half. This one's going to be kind of a quick one, quick quick episode, because we're only doing two blanks, and, and the, this resin sets up so fast that it'll be kind of a quickie today, but I needed to kind of get out of here and get, get start. I haven't packed yet or anything, so we got a few things that we, we need to do tonight for the trip, but... 
Uh, what's there was another thing. One one other thing that we haven't done is actually gone down and done like the hike into the the volcanoes national park, into the crater down there. So we we might check out that. Uh, we want to do a few hikes on the island. We haven't really done we've done some hiking gen, like general hiking, but we haven't like actually set out to go on a hike on the Big Island really. Aside from like exploring kind of and getting to another thing. Uh, so, uh, let's see, I got to get back my mind off of Hawaii and back into here. So 90 grams is what I'm splitting off over here. Well, went a little over, no big deal. Doesn't have to be exact in this case. Sometimes it does, not in this case. So we're doing 70% green. And like I said, I'm going to try a... I'm gonna see what it looks like after a quarter teaspoon of this green. Um, and you can mix and match uh, mica powders. You can add dyes in here as well. Um, there's lots of stuff that you can do uh, to adjust colors if you need to or, or whatever. Uh, if you wanted to darken it up, you know, you could add some like black uh, mica powder. Yeah, so that's, that's fine. It, that's what it's pretty much gonna look like. Um, if you were doing pen blanks, you want to pull some of that out and look at it on the on the stick. Because if you can see it, see through it on the stick, just pulling out a little bit on this on that stick, then you're going to see through it on the, the pen blanks, basically. Once you turn it down, drill it out and turn it. All right, so we got our blaze orange, and this is definitely nice and pearly and opaque. Yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. Yellow and green reminds me of Jägermeister. <laughs> Anybody like Jägermeister out there? Our mold is nice and warm. Let's get you guys looking right down at it. Sorry. Just wasn't doing what I wanted it to. All right, so we're at about two minutes. It's already nice and warm in the cup there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir here. I'm gonna wait till three minutes to pour. And again, these times, one of the, the biggest problem with time, um, and, you know, I'm saying two minutes, three minutes. The problem is if it takes you longer to stir, then two minutes is not, you know, my two minutes may not be your two minutes. So that's why time is not really, that's, I, I, I totally admit that that is not a very accurate way to do it unless you're very consistent with your mixing, which I am uh, probably, but it's hard to tell someone else, oh yeah, two minutes is all you need, you know. Um, temperature's decent, but it doesn't give you the thickness. I think we're good. It's about two minutes and 50 seconds, so we're going to go with a little bit of green. Add a little bit of orange. More green. Orange. I like this layering. Just keep keep taking a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Usually ends up giving you pretty good, you know, mixture and results if you're doing color swirling. The more careful you are at pouring each color, you know, the more separation you're going to have. Like that's going to be a very separated color as long as I don't dump the next one, you know. That'll keep your colors separated pretty well. So we got that thing nice and full. I'm going to give it a little, I like to give it a little swish. You just never know. That might be, that might make the blank right there. Who knows? All right, so we're ready to rock. We're gonna to toss it into our pressure pot over here. Gloves are all sticky. Now my camera's sticky, it's cool. That's why I take my gloves off before I put the pressure pot lid on. Plus when it's 85 degrees, I don't really wanna be wearing gloves for you know an hour. My hands end up starting to sweat. Get that nice and evenly tight and, and you know tighten down good. 
And then that's going up to 70 PSI. And Bob's your uncle. Where did that come from? That saying, Bob's your, and Bob's your uncle. Somebody had to be really bored to come up with that one. All right, there we go. Turn this light down. I'm gonna switch camera views. And there we go. So let me see if I can uh, see what's happening here. Translucent red with black wisps, nice. Yeah, that's gonna look sweet. Let me get this camera out of the way. So, like I said, I'm headed to Hawaii tomorrow. So, I'm going to be out of the shop. Um, I don't even know when we're getting back, honestly. I think, I want to say, let me look at a calendar real quick. I'll tell you what, I know exactly when we're going to Hawaii. I have no clue when we're coming back. <laughs> so, I think that I will be back. So, we're basically going to be gone almost two weeks. Uh, it's like 10 days or something like that. But we're not actually going to be home until like the 14th. 15th so maybe so we're definitely not having a stream next friday um the week after that maybe it kind of depends on how how backed up my load is because uh you know I, i'm not shipping like if people place orders on my website right now when i'm gone they're not shipping out because i'm not here so it kind of depends on how backed up i am but uh maybe we might be able to do one on friday the 16th um, if not, then we'll resume everything on the 23rd for sure. So I, I apologize for the inconvenience with the scheduling, but hey, 10 year anniversary, eh, it only comes around once. So we're going to take advantage of it. So I hope everybody had fun today. Bob's your uncle is afraid. I thought, I thought it meant Bob's your uncle is, oh, I guess that's what it means. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, nice. Well, thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss. Poured your first large blank. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Uh, oh, and the book, too. Cool. I'm, I'm, glad, you, I'm glad it helped out. Hopefully it helped out. And uh, good luck on that. I can't wait to see it. Uh, post, like, tag me on Facebook or Instagram if you post pictures of it. I'd love to see. Um, let's see. Sean from Melbourne. Melbourne. My, my wife uh, stayed in, uh, she did a semester in college in Geelong, I think is how you say it. And she went to, to Melbourne. That's how, <laughs> that's how people say it in, in the U.S., Mel, Melbourne. Uh, but I, she said that you guys just kind of, it's, it's pronounced like Melbourne, kind of. So that's cool. I had a good time. I, I went and visited her. Let's see. Thomas is from Texas. Okay, so I don't think I missed anything too big here. Uh, Jamie asked, what am I going to bring back to cast? Actually, here's an interesting thing. If you do go over to the big island of Hawaii, um, there is a place called Aloha Woods, and they have some wicked stuff there. Um, so we are going to try to find, you know, if we find some stuff, one, one of the problems is there's a little bit of a uh superstition thing with hawaii like don't take lava rocks off the island and, and there's a lot of different things so i just just to keep my hands clear of, of messing with the locals traditions i don't take a lot of stuff <laughs> from the island usually um but uh if if you want koa wood um aloha woods has amazing stuff lots of turning blanks and stuff like that but they also have a lot of like random scraps that you can get like a giant box for like nothing shipped home to you. So it's kind of cool. So I'm going to be hitting that for sure. And we're going to be kind of out hiking. And if there's stuff that I'm pretty sure is not going to cause uh, a riot for me to take or anything like that, um, I might try and grab a few things over there, uh, whatever I can find, you know. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I don't have any plans yet, but I'm definitely going to be bringing something home from Aloha Woods because we always like to stop there and say hi to those folks. They're really, really cool people. And like I said, the stock, the inventory, if you're like just a woodworker in general, oh my God, go walk through their, their warehouse. They have some amazing stuff. One thing that I actually might, um, uh, actually, that's a good question. So one thing that I'm thinking about maybe doing, I, I want to make a resin river table at some time, at some point. I'm thinking, and I do have I do have some slabs that I could use, but the woods, it's like cedar and you know whatever, and it's not the most amazing wood on the planet. 
I'm thinking I might actually look at Koa slabs and, and see what I can see what could come up. I may not make like a gigantic dining room table, but um, end tables, we actually need end tables. So I might look for some kind of a small slab of Koa if I can find it. So anyway, uh, so I hope you guys, like I said, enjoyed the stream tonight. I know it was kind of short, but hopefully you learned something, you had fun with it. And uh, like I said, we'll be back probably in a couple weeks. Most likely I'm kind of guessing is when, when we'll fire these back up. Um, there's going to be, so while I'm gone, I'm not going to be, I have no videos in the queue or anything like that, like real videos. I do have the replay from last week is going to be posted on Sunday. And then this replay is going to be posted on the following Sunday. So it'll kind of give the appearance that I'm, I've ha I'm posting videos, but they are going to just be replays of the, the live streams for, from this week and last week. So that's kind of the schedule, a little bit of a lull, but uh, be, be checking out uh, Instagram and Facebook because I'll be posting some of the stuff that we're doing and, and sites that we're seeing over in Hawaii. So if you want to check it out and kind of follow along, definitely follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Uh, I'll be thinking of all of you guys while I'm over in, on the beach in Hawaii laying on the, on the sand. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys when I get back in town. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight.